This is a new episode of our Climbing the Ranks series, and today we're going to speak about Soviet aircraft. <laughs> oh boy, are there a lot of interesting aircraft to cover here. Soviet engineers produced many fearsome designs throughout the years. It all starts with biplane aircraft, naturally, and we strongly suggest that you take the I-15 seriously. Or, more precisely, it's the I-153M62 Chaika variant. This fighter is extremely agile, and its four Shkas machine guns allow it to make short work of any opponent it encounters. Then we have the I-16. This is one of the first production monoplane fighters in the world. It's just as agile as its predecessor, while being noticeably faster in level flight. There's also an interesting light bomber here, the SB-2M-103. It boasts both good defensive armament and a decent bomb load, enabling it to be a threat to targets both on the ground and in the air. Early fighters won't have it easy trying to shoot this bird down. The second era is full of legends of World War II, including the single most produced military aircraft in aviation history, the Il-2 ground attack aircraft. If you enjoy wrecking ground targets, that is. <laughs> Thanks to a plethora of payload options, powerful guns and solid armor, it earned the nickname of the Flying Tank, and rightfully so. If you're more into fighters, get yourself an LA-5. A powerful radial engine here allows it to reach a very respectable max speed, while the aircraft's decent maneuverability and two Schwach cannons make it a great fighter to use at low to medium altitudes. We also have to mention a few aircraft fitted with inline engines, like the Yak-9 and the Yak-9B. Soviet engineers made use of everything they learned designing the previous models, creating an even better version of an already robust design. For instance, Duralumin was used to construct the fuselage of the aircraft, allowing for a much lighter frame. The first aircraft you run into at rank 3 is the Yak-9T. Its heavy 37mm cannon wasn't exactly built with precision fire in mind, but it can wreck enemies with a single shot. And that's not just aircraft we're talking here. If you get yourself a belt with AP rounds, you'll be able to pierce the roof of any tank at your BR. Not enough for you? Try flying the Yak-9K. This one is armed with a 45mm cannon, but you get significantly less ammo, and there are no armor-piercing rounds. It's still as deadly, though. Just be wary of your speed to avoid flutter, and stay at low altitudes where this aircraft performs best. If that's too heavy for you, then take a gander at the Yak-3, especially at the variant with cannons, the Yak-3P. It can't take too much punishment but what it lacks in survivability it makes up for in firepower, with three 20mm cannons and excellent flying capabilities. There's also a premium model called the Yak-3T. It combines the excellent maneuverability of the original Yak-3 with amazing armaments. If you're into bombers, the third era has the PE-8, this is a four-engine giant of an aircraft with a wing surface area of almost 180 square meters. It's equipped with excellent defensive armaments and can carry the most powerful bomb in the game, the Fab 5000. With good enough luck, it won't just take care of a couple of tanks. We're talking about taking out every single vehicle within the cap circle. Yep. There's a price to pay, though. The aircraft is rather slow and sluggish. Still, that's a deal many people are willing to make. 
The fourth era gives us a lot of upgraded versions of the aircraft of World War II era. Take, for instance, the LA-7. Size-wise and design-wise, it's very similar to the LA-5, but it incorporates a lighter and more durable metal airframe, making it lighter overall and giving it superior aerodynamics. As a result, the LA-7 is faster and has a higher rate of climb as well as a higher service ceiling. Now, apart from new versions of familiar designs, there is also a completely new aircraft waiting for you at rank 4. We're talking about the Su-6. It's armed to the teeth, coming with two 37mm cannons with lots of ammo, bombs, rockets and a rear gunner, making it a model ground attack aircraft. Both variations of the Su-6 available in the game have decent armor and surprising agility, especially given their weight, the only big difference between them being the model of an engine installed. The Tu-2 frontline bomber is one of the most versatile aircraft of its class. This is a fast aircraft with access to excellent suspended armaments that is also equipped with great guns. It can single-handedly turn the tide of a battle, easily dodging incoming fire. Need something heavier? Say no more. Here comes the Tu-4 heavy bomber. It might seem like a long-lost twin of the American B-29, but it actually has a few advantages over its American counterpart. First, it can carry up to 12 tons of bombs. Currently, that's the biggest bomb load in the game. Second, the bomber comes with great defensive turrets with rather small blind spots, making it a very scary thing to fight when it falls into capable hands. A few of those can carry the round all on their own. If their opponents fail to react to this threat in time, There are a lot of excellent aircraft at rank 5, but we'll give you the top 3. First of all, let's talk about the LA-200. It has two VK-1 turbojet engines, which give it a phenomenal for its BR rate of climb, 47 meters per second. This kind of mobility, as well as the fact that it's armed with three 37mm cannons, make it a great interceptor. Even though you'll have to be rather stingy with your ammo, sadly, it's going to be a recurring theme from now on. Then take a look at the MiG-15 BIS. Basically, this is a standard MiG-15 outfitted with a new engine producing 20% more thrust on an aircraft of the same size and weight. Its only problems are a limited ammo load and a subpar roll rate. But, well, eh, you can't have everything. Finally, there is the Eel 28 SH. Did you enjoy using S21 rockets on your MiG? Get this the Eel 28 SH can carry six S24 rockets that have twice as much explosive filler. Furthermore, apart from two nose mounted 23mm cannons, there are also two more of those in your turret. In other words, it's a hell of a bomber, especially if you're good at evading AA fire. On the very top of the Soviet tech tree, we get supersonic aircraft, or aircraft like the MiG-17. It entered service in the 50s, and despite being listed as a transonic, it was the first ever production fighter aircraft able to break the sound barrier. Then you get the MiG-19 PT. With a climb rate of 180 meters per second, this aircraft gets to its operational altitude in no time at all. But if you want to capitalize on that advantage, you have to be really good at using air-to-air -air missiles. It might be easier for you to rely on quick-firing NR-30 cannons, but with only 70 rounds per gun, your options would be rather limited. The last aircraft in this video is the MiG-21F-3. 
13, or the first ever MiG fitted with a Delta wing. What can we say? This fighter is as legendary and as easily recognizable as the Kalashnikov. The F-13 is amazing to fly at high speeds. It also has a very sleek profile, making it rather hard target to hit. The fighter is armed with a 30mm cannon which can dish out devastating amounts of damage, but comes with only 60 rounds. Yeah, it won't take an experienced pilot a lot of time to get back to base and then back to where the action is, but if you aren't a fan of returning to your airfield every few minutes, get used to relying on your missiles. Also, if you want to keep up with other MiGs or enemy Phantoms, get to your max speed first, and only then get to climbing. One last thing, we strongly suggest that you should get extra fuel. This is one very hungry bird. So that's it for today. What's your favorite Soviet aircraft? Tell us in the comments below.